everybody. I just decided to make this video because God has been putting something in my heart. I know I'm going straight to what I want to say because I don't have a fancy introduction for this video. I really just want to tell you guys what's in my heart. This is really a deep conversation and I hope that you guys will keep your hearts open as I speak these words that I believe are from God. Actually, he's been putting it in my heart to tell you guys these things for quite a while already. Pero ngayon lang ako, nag-decide na talagang mag-video na ako ngayon. And sorry if I'm having trouble finding the right words to say. It's just that I'm feeling a little bit emotional. But, uh, just keep your hearts open and receive every word. So, I'm sure you guys already read the title of this video and meron na po kayong idea kung ano po yung magiging sentro ng usapan na to which is really all about uh, returning to God yung pagbalik mo sa embrace ng Panginoon paano nga ba bumalik sa sentro ng kalooban niya once na tumalikod ka sa kanya once na lumayo ka sa kanya once na pinili mo yung kasalanan o yung maling relasyon na yan or trabaho na yan na ano man ang naging hadlang o ano man ang naging dahilan kung bakit napalayo ka sa Panginoon we all have different stories of of how we've been drawn into the world and out of the presence of God and of course um, for every person who has experienced uh, being outside of the presence of God, kayo po mismong nakakaalam kung gaano ka pangit, kung gaano ka hirap. Being away from the Lord, being outside of His presence is the worst place to be in. The world has a lot to offer. It promises success. It promises fulfillment. But the truth is at the end of every person's effort to achieve these things, talagang they will end up with nothing pa rin. Kasi if you don't have God, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you have nothing at all. And I, I don't say that lightly. I mean it that if you don't have the Lord in your life, you really do need Him. Uh, so much of the trouble happening in this world is being blamed on God. But the truth is, tayo mismo ang lalayo ng sarili natin sa Panginoon at yun ang nagiging dahilan kung bakit nagkakaganto ang mundo natin because of the choice that people are making and not including God. The reason why there are broken families is because God isn't in the equation. God isn't even part of people's lives. So I just want to share something and this video is for every person who feels far from God. Alam ko kaya mo pinindot to kasi nabibigatan ka na, nahihirapan ka na. Hindi mo alam kung paano ka nga ba babalik sa Panginoon. Paano ka ba magsa-start over ulit kasi parang ang lalim-lalim mo na sa kasalanan, ang lalim-lalim mo na sa problema mo. So Paano? This video was actually inspired by the comments and messages that I've been seeing recently on my social media. A few people sent me messages on TikTok, a few on Instagram, tas yung iba naman mga comments na nakikita ko. May mga taong nagtatanong, paano po ba bumalik sa Panginoon? Paano po ba magsimula ulit? Tas meron din pong nagtatanong, mapapatawad pa po ba ako ng Panginoon? I'm not the one na magbibigay ng sagot sa inyo, but the Word of God is. At magiging vessel lamang ako. I'm just gonna be an instrument of God's Word na ang babasahin ko sa inyo is galing mismo sa salita ng Panginoon, okay? So, I wanna start off by reading 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so, it just mentions here, if we confess. So, it means that this gift of forgiveness is available for every person. We know that Jesus Christ already paid the price nung namatay siya sa krus. Now, the only thing you need to do is confess your sins. You need to admit your sin. Kailangan mong aminin na nagkasala ka, na nagkamali ka. Aminin mo sa Panginoon at sabi dito na tapat ang Panginoon na patawarin tayo at lilinisin niya pa po tayo sa mga kasalanan natin, sa karumihan natin. Amen? So that's such a powerful verse and whenever you feel doubtful kung kaya ka bang patawarin ng Panginoon, remember this word. Kasi tandaan mo, kahit na ano pa ang iniisip mo at kahit ano pang nararamdaman mo, hindi po yun ang basehan kung ano yung katotohanan. Ang katotohanan ay kung ano ang nakalimutan sulat sa salita ng Panginoon. So, every time you feel doubtful kung kaya kang patawarin ng Panginoon, remind yourself of this verse that it says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 na kung iko-confess mo ang kasalanan mo, kaya kang patawarin ng Panginoon. So, God knows if you're just playing games. Kasi there's two types of people. Yung isa, alam na niyang nasa mali siya pero patuloy pa rin siyang nagkakasala. At meron din yung tao na nagsastruggle lang talaga at hindi niya alam paano talaga gawin yung tama. God has mercy talaga on both people People, but still, I want to remind you, ha, wag na wag nyong ite-take for granted at wag na wag nyong ia-abuse 
yung mercy and yung love ng Panginoon. You know, uh, during one of our Sunday services, nung isang Sunday lang po, talagang nakaramdam ako ng kabigatan at naramdaman ko na merong mga tao na umaasa na lang sa, sa awa at sa mercy ng Panginoon thinking na it's okay na magkasala lang sila ng magkasala kasi alam naman nila papatawarin sila ng Panginoon. But that's the wrong mindset. Actually, kabalik ta ang dapat mangyari kung nagkaroon ka talaga ng totoong encounter sa Panginoon. Because some people, when they when they hear about the love and mercy of God, they, they take advantage of it. They continue living in sin, thinking that, oh, the Lord's gonna forgive me, the Lord's gonna forgive me. What if you don't make it to the finish line? What if Jesus returns and you're not ready? Tapos sasabihin mo na nagpatuloy ka lang sa kasalanan kasi iniisip mo papatawarin ka ng Panginoon. Don't play games with the Lord. Alam ng Lord yung heart mo kung nagre-rebelde ka o kung, kung nagsastruggle ka talaga sa kasalanan na yun. Pero kung alam mo na nasa mali ka na, confess your sin right now, repent. I will never forget nung bata ako, paulit-ulit pinapaalala ng magulang ko. Sabi nilang ganun sa akin. Isa lang ang paraan para bumalik sa Panginoon. The way back to God is through repentance. Repentance is the key. What is repentance? Repentance is yung nagsusorry ka sa Panginoon, not just based on a word na sorry, kundi talagang yung puso mo is making a determined decision na tatalikuran mo na yung kasalanan na yun, tatalikuran mo na yung pamumuhay na yun, yung maling pamumuhay na yun, at pupunta at lalapit ka na sa Panginoon at nagde-decision ka na mamumuhay ka na para sa Kanya. That is repentance. Repentance is not, sorry Lord, iyak ka ng iyak, pero alam mo din sa sarili mo, nasa isip mo na na, nako, ang hirap, alam ko, babalikan ko pa rin yung kasalanan na yun. That's not repentance. Genuine repentance is, you're turning away from that sin and you're making a decision na ayaw mo na, ayaw mo na ng old life mo, ayaw mo na ng living in the flesh, ayaw mo ng living in sin, at nagde-decision ka na ngayon na mabubuhay ka para sa Panginoon. That's genuine repentance. I just wanna remind you guys of another verse. Sabi po dito sa Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. So, right now, you are listening to the Word of God. Right now, God is using someone and that someone is me. God is using someone to penetrate your heart. God is using someone to speak to you today and all that I'm asking of you today is to do what this verse says and it says not to harden your heart. It's so easy for people to harden their hearts by putting up a tall wall between them and God, thinking and convincing themselves that they're okay. I'm okay, I don't need that, kaya ko pa naman, hindi pa naman ako totally na sa point na gigive up na, kaya pa, kaya pa, kaya pa. We wait till we reach the hardest point of our life before we acknowledge that we need God. Don't wait for something terrible to happen before you acknowledge that you need God. That's not what God wants. God doesn't wish bad for you. He doesn't wish evil to happen upon your life. It's people in their sin who open up their lives, who open up a door unto the enemy kung bakit nakaka-penetrate yung gawa ng kaaway, kung bakit puro gulo sa marriage, puro gulo sa pamilya, puro gulo sa pera, puro gulo sa business. All these troubles of lives or even abuse, sexual abuse na nagaganap sa pamilya or verbal abuse, ano pa man ang nagiging issues natin sa buhay natin, that's not God's will. So if you've experienced these things sa buhay mo, wag na wag mong isisisi sa Panginoon. Sometimes the things that happen to us are a result of either our own disobedience or even the disobedience of the people around us, the people who are close to us. But don't blame God. That's not what God wants for you. When those things happen to you, nakikita ka ng Panginoon, naaawa ang Panginoon sa you. He wants to rescue you. He wants to pick you up and turn your life around. Today, this video serves as an invitation for you to return back into the loving embrace of your father. He wants you back. Yes, I know. Alam ko sasabihin nyo sa akin, hindi ko alam kung ano yung pinagdaanan nyo. Hindi ko alam ano yung mga kasalanan na nagawa ninyo. Hindi ko alam lahat ng nagawa nyo sa buhay nyo. Yes, you're right. I don't know everything that you've been through. I don't know every sin that you've committed. And I don't know your whole story ng buhay mo. But one person does know everything that you've been through, everything that you've done. And that's Jesus. Jesus. And still, even though He knew you would do all those things, He still chose to die on the cross 2,000 years ago for your sins, hoping and praying that you would receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Nirisk niya ang lahat. Binigay niya ang buhay niya. 
Binigay niya ang buhay niya para sa iyo even though there's not a 100% assurance that you would give your whole heart unto him. But today this serves as an invitation. Let me repeat, do not harden your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate your heart right now. Allow him to move right now. Even right now I can feel the presence of God. I believe his spirit is moving. Allow him to move. Allow him to speak. And right now whatever you're doing, wherever you are right now, let go of whatever busyness you're doing right now and I just want you to close your eyes and focus on the Lord right now. And as you're closing your eyes, I'm going to read a very special verse that God has given me that I believe he wants you to hear today. Close your eyes right now and I want you to just lift up your hands unto the Lord. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter where you are. Even if you're all alone or even if there's people around you, it would be better to just find a private place. But I want you right now to take this moment seriously. Close your eyes right now and lift up your hands and keep your heart open. I'm just gonna read these few verses to you right now. This is from Jeremiah chapter 3 and I'm gonna start in verse 11. O Israel, my faithless people. So, gusto kong imagine nyo kayo po yung tinutukoy dito na Israel. My faithless people, come home to me again. For I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. Admit that you rebelled against the Lord your God and committed adultery against Him by worshipping idols under every green tree. What is an idol? An idol is anything in your life na mas inuuna mo kesa sa Kanya. Yung mga bagay sa buhay mo na kumukuha at nagnanakaw ng attention mo, ng pagmamahal mo at dun mo ibinubuhos. It could be your work, it could be your career, it could be even a wrong relationship that God already warned you about pero pinasukan mo pa rin. Whatever it may be, something that taking the place of God in, in, in the throne of your heart, yun po ay isang idolo. Kaya sabi dito, admit that you rebelled against the Lord your God and committed adultery against Him by worshipping idols under every green tree. Confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. I, the Lord, have spoken. It says here to confess that you have refused to listen to His voice because the truth is, this is not the first time that God has tried to talk to you. This is not the first time na tinatry ng Panginoon na hilahin ka, pabalik sa pag-ibig niya. Hindi po ito yung kauna-unahang panahon na ginawa ng Panginoon ito sa iyo. Many times God is reaching out. Many times God is waiting. Many times God is crying. We're not the only ones who have emotions. Sometimes we think God is just such a big God. He's way up there. He doesn't feel a thing. He's fine. He'll understand. You're wrong. He also feels things that we feel. If we know how to feel sad, God knows how to feel sad. Kung marunong tayo magalit, marunong din pong magalit ang Panginoon. Kung marunong tayo umiyak, marunong din pong umiyak ang Panginoon. Kung marunong tayo maging masaya, marunong din pong maging masaya. Masaya ang Panginoon. Let's not disregard the fact that God also feels things. He feels emotions also that are even more pa than what we feel. Kaya nga po sabi dito, come home to me again for I am merciful. Sabi dito, confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. Hindi nagkulang ang Panginoon mag-remind sa'yo. Hindi nagkulang ang Panginoon na iabot ang kamay niya sa'yo. He gave you countless chances. He brought people into your life to remind you. He brought people in your life to warn you. He brought people in your life to correct you but you hardened your heart you put up your wall of pride at hindi mo pinakinggan yung mga sinabi ng mga taong yun and now you're left in a place where you, you feel hopeless na parang sana nakinig ako you're full of guilt you're full of condemnation right now you're full of shame sobrang nahihiya ka sa ginawa mo sobrang nahihiya ka sa mga sa mga pinasukan mong bagay na sana hindi mo ginawa you're full of regrets right now and I wanna tell you that God will wash away all that shame and all that guilt today if you will receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Today is an opportunity for you to have your relationship sa Panginoon restored. You have that choice to make today. Kaya sabi po dito, dun na po tayo sa verse 14, it says, Return home, you wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Ibig sabihin, ibabalik ka niya where you belong and where is that place that you belong? In His presence, in His will, in in his love. And then let's skip to verse 19. Sabi dito, I thought to myself, this is God speaking, I would love to treat you as my own children. I wanted nothing more than to give you this beautiful land, the finest possession.
possession in the world. I looked forward to your calling me, Father. Ibig sabihin, nilulook forward daw niya pag tinatawag natin pangalan niya. And I wanted you never to turn from me. But you have been unfaithful to me, you people of Israel. You have been like a faithless wife who leaves her husband. I, the Lord, have spoken. You know, I find it so amazing how God used this illustration of a husband and a wife. Because if any of you, ay kung, kung meron man sa inyo naranasan nyo na, na to be in a relationship, kahit mag-boyfriend lang or mag-girlfriend or kung meron po sa inyo may asawa na, I'm sure you would be so hurt kung niloko ka ng asawa mo o ng taong karelasyon mo. That feeling na parang binitray ka, that feeling na tinalikuran ka, that feeling na binigay mo ang lahat para dun sa taong yun and yet tinalikuran ka and yet pinagpalit ka. And we're not aware that those very things na nakakasakit sa atin, yun at yun mismo ang ginagawa natin sa Panginoon. Man, I can't even imagine the feeling of, of, of a person that I love so much. Like, let's, for example, my husband, kung niloko niya man ako, kunwari, man, that would break my heart. I would probably feel like I can't go on anymore. Hindi ko na kaya ng magmahal kung nangyari yun sa akin. Pero ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon hindi ganon. Ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon kahit pa ulit-ulit natin siyang nasasaktan, kahit pa ulit-ulit natin siyang tinatalikuran, andun pa rin siya, inaabot niya ang kamay niya sa atin. Siya pa ang nanunuyo kahit na tayo ang may mali. At naalala niyo po ba kanina, sabi ko, ni-relate niya po sa isang mag-asawa. And can you believe na kung tayo nga nasasaktan pag, pag niloko tayo ng partner natin and yet hindi pa tayo perpekto ha? Alam natin sa sarili natin na kaya nangyari yung mga bagay nun kasi tayo din mismo may pagkukulong. Kulang. But think about God. Think about the love of Jesus. Wala siyang pagkukulang. And yet, nagawa mong talikuran siya. And I'm not doing this to make you feel guilty or to make you feel condemned. I want you to think about these things na sinasabi ko para mas ma-realize mo kung gaano ka grabe ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa'yo. Minsan iniisip natin, oh, mahal ako ng Lord. Okay, narinig ko na yun. Oh, mahal ako ng Lord. No! You don't understand how great the love of God is for you. You don't understand. His love for you is just so, so great. And I pray that today you would have an encounter with His love. I pray na ngayong moment na to na nakikinig ka, mapuspos ka ngayon ng pag-ibig ng Panginoon because that's what you need. Your heart is in pain. Your heart is hurting. You have so many questions. You have so much doubt. Ang dami mong unforgiveness. Ang dami mong sama ng loob sa tatay, sa nanay, sa mga kapatid. Ang dami mong hinanakit. Ang dami mong pain. Ang dami mong sugat. And only the love of God can heal you. Ang pag-ibig lamang ng Panginoon ang kayang magpagaling ng lahat ng sugat na meron sa ating mga puso. Katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, hindi ko alam lahat ng naranasan ninyo. Hindi nyo rin alam lahat ng naranasan ko. Pero alam ng Panginoon lahat at isa lang ang meron tayo in common. At yun ay kailangan natin ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon. All of us are searching for love. That's even probably the reason kung ba't tumalikod tayo sa Panginoon. Iniisip natin, maybe someone will love me. Maybe kung, kung pinasukan ko tong business na to, tong trabaho na to, kung nag-aral ako ng mabuti, mahahanap ko yung kailangan ko, maybe I'll be able to make my parents proud at magiging okay ako. We promise ourselves fulfillment in these things na pinapasukan natin. We commit ourselves to these things. And yet, at the end, we're left in disappointment. Imagine you give your whole self to those things, a relationship, your work, your school, all these things na wala naman talagang masama. But we pour out our whole heart unto these things. And yet, the thing that we don't realize is yung mga bagay na to, we're trusting those things to hold our heart. And yet, those things were never created to hold our heart. The world can't handle your heart. The world can't understand your heart. The world can't hold your heart. Only the Lord can hold your heart. Only He can take care of your heart. Only He is a faithful lover. All of us fail, but the love of God does not fail. So, yun lang po ang gusto kong ishare sa inyo. And right now, I want to give an opportunity sa inyong lahat bago po natin tapusin tong video na to. I just want to ask, were you touched by this message today? Because honestly, I don't even care about the likes. I don't even care about the views. Even if one person watches this at ma-restore ang relationship mo sa Panginoon, I'd be more than happy. Because I, I don't even understand what I've been feeling these past few days. Ang bigat-bigat nang nasa puso ko, ang bigat-bigat at sinasabi ng Panginoon, it's time for them to come home. 
It's time for you to come home. It's time for you to return into the loving embrace of your Creator. Don't wait any longer. Don't delay it. Don't say, okay, later na lang. Don't say, bukas na lang. Don't say, next week, next year. Don't allow the devil anymore to waste more of your time. You need the Lord. You need to be restored to the Lord. So right now, I would like to invite you into a prayer of repentance and to, and to also a prayer of salvation. So if that's you and you want to be prayed for, just lift up your hands and I'm going to pray for you right now. Uh, first, I'm going to pray for you. Then after I pray for you, I want you to repeat the things that I'm going to say later on in our second prayer. Okay, so first, I just want to pray for you. Lord, tinataas ko po ang lahat ng taong nanonood ngayon, Panginoon. Katulad ng pinag-pray ko, Lord God, bago ako mag-film, sabi ko, Panginoon, na kung sino man ang gusto mong makapanood nito, Panginoon, sila ang makakapanood nito. It means, Lord God, hindi aksidente na nanonood yung nanonood ngayon, Panginoon. I pray that you would get a hold of their hearts, Lord God. Fill them with your love right now. Fill them with your presence right now. Let them realize that you're all that they need and they don't need to waste their, ta their time searching in all the wrong places for the love, for the peace, and for the joy that their heart is desiring, Lord God. Show them right now that all those things that they need and all those things that they're desiring can be found in your love and in your embrace alone. Give them the grace right now to return home unto you, Lord God. And I pray that you would just keep them safe. Comfort them right now. Embrace them right now with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And to those who would want their relationship to be restored to God, I also want you to lift up your hands right now. And please do repeat this prayer right now that I'm about to say, okay? I will give you time to repeat what I'm saying. Dear Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I am rededicating my life unto you. I ask that you would forgive me for my sin, for my rebellion, and for hardening my heart towards you. Today, I thank you because you have given me a fresh start. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. I give you praise. And from this day forward, I promise to live my life for you. I give you my heart and all that I am. And I surrender to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching.